and welcome, Laura K. Buzz here, and we are back with another accessibility-focused casual little interview video this week. Uh, I am joined today by Jeffrey, who is a journalist that I complain about video game accessibility with sometimes. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm I'm all right. I'm better than I was a few days ago when I was <laughs> yeah. suffering with the topic of today's video. Um, but yeah, we 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 chat about accessibility sometimes. Uh, we we chatted a bunch last year about uh, the PlayStation Access controller as that was mm -hmm. was approaching, and our uh, many very complicated feelings on that device's <laughs> release. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, yes, we did. Yeah, um, we're doing very grateful for because I think that um, that piece perhaps did. A a little bit more than what most pieces were doing when it came to the access control. There was a lot of um, unmitigated praise for it, which is fine because I think a lot of people writing about it were the target audience, as it were. Um, but it, the, the issues around it were a bit more complex than it, it, maybe we or Sony would yeah. admit. It, it's one of those things that... It's a problem that comes up all the time with accessibility, Ooh. is trying to walk that line of... I want to praise that things are moving forward and I don't want criticism to come across yeah. as me telling you off for trying to improve things. But also, it's not enough to just try. You ha We have to talk about the things that can improve still. Mm. Um, well, it's become more personal now that Sony's literally just uh, blocked the Cronus <laughs> again yeah, um, I... <laughs> for, what, what, two weeks or until they sort it out, which seems like a very yeah. pointless and slightly callous uh, move. I, but I, li I literally have yeah. a video about that going up later <laughs> this week and the eternal battle between the needs of cross-platform controller support and the fact that most of the people actually offering it are cheap device manufacturers and mm. as unfortunate as that is. But, uh, yeah. Well, you also spoke to me for, the, for a piece I'm doing on third party accessibility didn't you i i well, did ish. i ish. You, you spoke to me and then i said can i use some of these answers we've we, we spoken piece. bits of it'll <laughs> yeah. pop up at some point but uh yeah we're specifically here today to chat about something that i have only experienced once about three days before recording this but you have a bit more experience with me than um i had my first migraine last week and as someone well, who'd uh, never welcome. yeah <laughs> as someone who'd never experienced a migraine before um there were times in my life I thought, is this a migraine? No, no, they were not. Now I know what that is. Um, um, yeah, you as... know, you know when you get one. It, yeah. it, it's it's not uh, it's not ambiguous. Exactly. Do Do you want to explain to anyone who's never had a migraine what a migraine is? Oh, well, I mean, like imagine like the worst headache you've ever had, and then multiply that by I can't move without being in excruciating pain. Plus. You know, I mean, it, as with so many health things, it's mm. subjective, but generally speaking, a very weird sensations, um, yeah. like really unmitigated nausea. Mm. Um, and like, I think, like for me, I get a lot of like very, um, weird vision things. I know people get like mm. auras where they will see literally literal auras. Yeah. I don't, I just get like really unfocused in a way that. Mm isn't kind of uh it's not really cognitive it's literally just like i kind of can't really see things <laughs> in yeah. the way i expect i i understand what you mean on that one in that i was experiencing um it felt like my eyes couldn't focus at certain distances mm. anymore i could focus at close range but anything my eyes would usually be able to focus just fine on in the distance was just very painful it, it feels sometimes it feels in. like to me like i'm wearing glasses and they're dirty and i can't Focus it, beyond like the dirt on the glasses. It felt like I was wearing the wrong prescription of glasses, yeah. and <laughs> it, it, the things the things that those glasses weren't designed for were not working. Mm. Um, but it, yeah, it was just this full pressure, um, you know, headache right from sort of the cheeks upwards. Um, real, real yeah. uncomfortable sensation. Very um, much um, all encompassing in the head as well. I mean, yeah. often you'll get them when they're like on one side, but mm. you have like it's not like. Say a tension headache where it's oh it's in my eye it's like it's literally it'll be your whole face the whole top of your yeah. head um and like the thing about this they are completely debilitating you can't really do anything yeah. um because any slight movement just jars the pain it's, to max yeah it's it's one of those things i you know i 
I've been ill many times in my life with varying <laughs> things, and usually one of the few saving graces of being ill is it's an excuse to sit down and play video games for a bit and not feel guilty about doing that. Um, but very quickly I realized that was not going to be possible because like funnily enough, I was I was chatting with someone on this show last week about uh, photosensitivity, and mm. one of the first things I realized was I could not look at a screen, uh, particularly a bright screen. I had to turn if I was going to try and look at a screen, the, the brightness had to be way, 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 way down. Um, flashing visual effects were incredibly painful. Uh, the the things it was very quick that I realized like the things that I would need if I was going to even try and enjoy myself uh, over the next couple of days once the worst of it was gone, which was like, I needed l reduced flashing and reduced audio volume range were like very big ones very quickly. Well, also, that's the thing is that like, migraines aren't just like, oh, an afternoon. It, mm. They last days. I mean, yeah. if I get a migraine, I'm going to have some form of symptoms of a migraine for at least a week. I've, I've yeah. had two week migraines and like, I don't, the pain doesn't last two weeks, but that's mostly because I medicate quite heavily. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm very, very careful around um, medication, except when I have a migraine, and it's just straight yeah. to the coding and calm yeah. down. Because that's that's the the thing is like there was you know I had four or five hours where I was in the midst of it, but for like mm. two or three days afterwards, I was just completely like n I was very cautious of anything that might set it back off. I was like, I want to mm. make sure it's completely gone before I do anything. And the the concern of like the the number of things that were exacerbating it in the moment, like really, really put me on edge about enjoying media for it for a good few days afterwards. I mean, so the, the only kind of like positive of migraines, if they are kind of a transient thing for you, they're not mm. a chronic. You know, is that they they tend to have very definitive triggers. Yeah. Um, so like for like for me, before I even got ill, I was starting to get regular migraines, and it was always like at the weekend after work, I'd stay up late and get yeah. up late, and that always gave me migraines. Sometimes it's food, sometimes it's you know, like there yeah. there is there tends to be one thing you can pinpoint and go right. This is what gives me migraines, and if I don't do that, then I don't get migraines. Um, but, but yeah, they're just and, really fucking horrible. <laughs> no, and and the, that's the jo the joy of them. Suddenly, is that like a, a, until you've had several, and you can go, oh, that's the common factor. They're just mm. going to sneak up on you for a bit. Um, but yeah, as someone that that chronically experiences migraines, is there anything that video games have done that you find either for you make it less likely that you're going to experience migraines, or mean that you can still enjoy them even if one has just happened? Or relatively recently, um, generally speaking, if 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 a game is very very flashy and bright, mm. I'm gonna struggle to play it yeah. in general. But um, certainly around periods of migraine. Um, the same with uh, games with iffy sound design, where the sound mm. just sound levels jump up suddenly and go yes. down. Yeah, you know, sound is a really big trigger for for my headaches and migraines. So. Um, Anything that lets me adjust, yes. um, very basic, but anything that lets me adjust brightness in mm. more discrete ways than just general brightness, and anything that lets me change the various levels of sound for for different um, yeah. different sounds, which you know, again, most people go, well, most games do that, but what they don't all do. <laughs> and, yeah, um, and the more detailed that is, the better. Um, yeah. as, as daunting as it can be to see, like. 20 sound sliders it's actually really helpful for me to go like yeah. well these are the things that are bothering me and the rest of it's fine so i'm going to turn that down um otherwise i mean no i mean the, the problem is games are all on screens and so it's I mean, very di very difficult to, for me to say i mean yeah like you, as long you, as i do this yeah i mean you say that i the, the the one thing i was thinking about on friday when i was having this migraine and i was like i'm bored out of my I, i'm having a miserable time but i'm bored having a miserable time and i wish i could be doing something to keep myself interested and i did realize there was one game i could play without looking at a screen i booted up the last of us part two remake mm. that just come out <laughs> and just started playing with the audio cues yeah and that was something i could like listen to and because like the big thing that was setting me off was my eyes it was really nice to be able to still enjoy a piece of media in the dark and like yeah, that I mean, kind of flexibility uh, yeah. is is really appreciated G games that are quite static as well mm. 
because because the, the problem isn't necessarily for me brightness it's not like oh this is very it's it's excessive movement Mm. Yeah. um and my eyes having to track that my eyes don't track movement particularly well in 3d space anyway Mm. um certainly since i got ill but like when i'm like in the wake of a migraine Yeah. asking me to track multiple things on the screen is a recipe for me turning the game off um Yeah. I've, I've literally just started playing a Sonic Frontiers Oh, because yes. it's on sale. And um, <laughs> like, I, I haven't had a migraine for about two weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a, I'm fine and I can't see anything in that game. So if, if I would have a migraine <laughs> and try Yeah. and play that, I'd just be lost because it's just like, firstly, the game's a bit of a mess. Um, and I, 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 I don't, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet, but it, it feels a bit janky. Mm. Yeah. But like the speed of it is all over the place. So one moment you're going really, really slowly, and the next you're like whizzing up, and it's like, why can't track? Yeah. And like, the, if I had a headache, that would make it ten times worse. <laughs> I I can a hundred percent understand that. Like I, as as you said earlier, one of the things I was experiencing when I had this migraine was was a whole load of nausea, which went really poorly with the fact that I already get very motion sick at video games and just turned it up to eleven. And yeah, it really. The thing I found was that it was exacerbating a lot of problems I already have interacting with video games. Be it motion sickness triggers were making me feel a lot more nauseous. As someone who's autistic, a lot of the audiovisual stuff that that I find a little over stimulating was just ramped up. It was just every bit of input was worse than usual, and yeah, it 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 really takes. If there's something you don't do well within video games already, it really can turn that up a lot. <laughs> I mean, really, it, it it requires that things are just simplified across the board. Yeah. I mean, like, even something is like, like I, I I have cognitive issues anyway. Mm. Well, I will literally just walk into a room and forget what I've gone there. Oh yeah. But video games, like you know, cogn cognitive disabilities. I mean, we've spoken about cognitive disability before as well. We, we have, right? yeah. But you know that that's a, that's a, like a really kind of a, something that developers don't think about enough, or are trying to get too clever about. And when I've got a migraine or coming off a migraine, that only gets worse. So you plot me in like Tears of the Kingdom or something. I'm going nowhere because I <laughs> no, I, I it, it absolutely does. Just everything you're already dealing with, it just makes ten times worse because all of your focus is going on something else. You are totally aware of your body because every part of your body is starting to rebel, and. Annoyingly, a lot of the stuff that you you think is what you need to be doing with a migraine is kind of often counter to what actually helps. Like, you know, you get this nausea, but actually eating often helps migraines. Yeah. Like, like just Yeah. having a sandwich or something. It's Um, sometimes it's the weirdest things. I mm. I expected lying down to help. Lying down did not help. I needed to be upright for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why I needed to be upright in the dark. My body was just like having a bad time if I lay down. Really, really simple things can just Yeah. really throw it. And people say, oh, you got to lay really still in a dark room, but actually lay like, still in a really dark room. Like, you can't do anything with that because you're so bored. Yeah. And because you're bored, you're just sitting, like, you're thinking, and thinking hurts when you have a migraine. Like, you, Yeah. you're not allowed to think. What you really need, really, is to, like, have, like, a TV that's, like, just far enough away that the light's not getting you, but and that you can, like, just stare at to... Yeah. occupy yourself but without having to take anything in because taking stuff in Yeah. means you're thinking and thinking hurts <laughs> I I ended up defaulting to my favorite bit of media for I don't want to actually focus on this but it's pleasant if I'm listening but if I don't pay attention I'm not going to like beat myself up I miss something which is a podcast called The Empty Bowl and it's just two men talking about American cereal mostly cereals I will never eat as someone not living in America Mm. I just but just very very gently calmly talking about cereals and it's like This will keep my brain engaged, but if I miss it, I'm, I'm not like intently listening to it, and it's perfect for moments I'm very like that. permissive about what people want to do with their lives, but like fucking hell, like it's I just mean, talking about serious. I mean, it was perfect for I need to not think, but I need something going in there. Oh, that's not a criticism of you. It's just like like there are nerds, and then there are nerds. <laughs> like... I, look, sometimes it's nice to hear people be passionate about a thing, even if I don't 
particularly care Absolutely. about the thing. Like, Passion can be infectious. All, all, all of me just being really judgmental just now came from jealousy because these people <laughs> clearly have something they care about so much that they're going to start a podcast about cereal. Like, exactly. I say this as someone who loves cereal. Like, but yeah, no, that is 100% jealousy. Oh. <laughs> but at the same time, I just had a visceral reaction in my soul <laughs> when I heard podcast cereal. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, in in terms of of gaming accessibility and migraines, I I feel like if there's anyone watching this that is doing game design stuff and wants to know how to be accommodating, I feel like a lot of the answers and like correct me if you if you disagree on this, but I feel like a lot of the answers are things that are already being done in the accessibility mm. space, but just that no one's stopped and gone, these might also help these people. Um, be it, as you said, uh, granular sliders for uh, for audio, be it things like um, being able to have good um, map layouts where you can put, like, uh, here's a route on a mini-map that I, while I'm running somewhere well, in the so line you of how to about, get say, there. And... Ubisoft. Ubisoft lets you toggle on cognitive yeah. directional stuff. But even something like that, like even if yeah. your game isn't doesn't you know even if you're one of those games where it's like we're going to be really clever about how we navigate the world, yeah. just having the option to just turn something on. Yes, because I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's a really good point. And like Ubisoft's a great example with Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown recently. You could turn guided mode in that game on and off at will, because migraines aren't an always thing. It, it it is a condition where it is really useful to be able to turn a setting on midway through a game and not just go, you need to commit at the start to use this the whole time or never. Yeah, I, I it's sort of like going back to what I was saying about things just being simple, I mean, I think a really good example is um, Persona 5, hmm. a game with remarkable art direction, both because it's beautiful and because it's really inaccessible. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just too dynamic. There's too many axes. Yeah. Um, and just like an option to do something like that and like make that simpler. Because it's really interesting because going into Tactica, they completely changed, they, they kept the art direction, but they changed the um, the influence, mm. which made it more accessible because it was just more rational. And and the ability to do that kind of, like if, if you're a PC game, you can turn the settings down. Yeah. So the game might look a little bit worse, but it's also going to be less demanding on your eyes. Mm. You can't do that on consoles. Generally speaking, you can yeah. kind of go like, "Hey, like focus on performance," I guess, which doesn't make any changes really for people. For most people, most people won't notice that. But having like these little options just to say, like, let's just bring these graphics down a bit. Let's just bring the dynamism down a bit. Let's slow down combat. Let's you know all all the things that we are we're already seeing with accessibility starting to filter into the most accessible games are actually really helpful for migraines and the after effects of migraines they're just not necessarily kind of floated shall we say in the accessibility community as these are solutions for migraines as well because obviously look what we're seeing a lot now i say a lot but from specific you know uh, studios publishers is they will showcase this stuff they'll highlight it ahead of um yeah. releases and they'll say hey this is accessibility for you know deaf players here's a visual visually impaired accessibility i'm not necessarily saying they should have a migraine section but it would no, help but... to kind of maybe have a little note on screen saying hey this is really good for other things as well um I, I, but then so that's going into uh better communication around yeah. accessibility and I mean, we're yeah. not quite there yet. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things where even if we, you know, we aren't going to, as you suggest, we're not going to see developers going, here's our accessibility settings for migraines in their mm. settings menu. I think a big part of it is just getting that as an idea on developers' radars and going, it's not constantly going to be present, but this is something that when it hits someone is going to be really debilitating to their ability to engage with piece of media you've mm. made look at the settings you've got and think, could any of these be tweaked or offered in a slightly different way that would also help people with migraines? Like, it, it's just having in mind that, that that is a group of people who you might be able to help, I think will go a long way in that regard. Well, I think that would also make a lot of like the settings we're seeing develop into something more discreet. Because yes. um, that's kind of what we're talking about here. It's not necessarily yeah. like we need this setting. It's like we need this setting, but maybe a bit more than usual. Mm. Um, so it's you know it, it, it's about kind of giving players a bit more control over their experience, 
in a more discreet way that isn't maybe just toggle on and off. It's toggle on and off and then, you know, uh, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for. Uh, do you know, just like essentially Yeah. have a slider for most things. Yeah. Like the the example that that jumped to, to mind for me right there that I, I, I don't think I've seen a game ever do but would be great would be something like reduce the dynamic range of volume so like the volume spikes less but allow you to still do sliders beyond that. Go, we've reduced the volume peaks and, and troughs but also you can still... tweak down specific sounds that are causing problems like it's little things like that that are already being done just off of them in, in combination could be really good Yeah, because like because part of the problem with with auditory stuff with migraines is that having to go too many things is just a bit confusing. So being able to you can turn the music off in most games without turning off the sound, great. But just then, just lower the spectrum of 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 different volumes and those because the sound design across all media, it, it, certainly in the West, is terrible. <laughs> I mean, I, the fact that I have to, every time I watch a film, I have to have the control in my hand Yeah. because I need to turn it up for the talking and turn it down for any music. I, I still think about, uh, what was it, Pokemon Sword and Shield, where the audio sliders were a missable key item that you could just not talk to an NPC and you didn't get audio sliders. Uh, Don't talk to me about Pokemon accessibility. Pokemon Oh, Sword and Shield I... let you play with one hand, like the right I... stick. Let you Yeah. do everything the left stick did, and then he just got rid of that for The, the one Scarlet that, and Violet. that my, <laughs> my bugbear about Pokemon accessibility will always be that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee does allow you to play without motion controls in docked mode, but it Yeah. won't let you use that control scheme if you're on the TV. It forces motion controls, even though they have a perfectly good alternative coded into the game. Like, that's... Yeah. Motion controls are just didn't work in that game at all. I I... I could never get I didn't have a problem with them, but I don't blame anyone who did. Um... But... I just yeah, like I, I mean, but that's Nintendo, isn't it? Like, Yeah. we're going to make accessibility so that people up to seventy can play these games, but we're not actually going to ever consider disabled people when we do that. They, they really are, I, I, I highly suspect, going to be the final major developer that gets onto the accessibility train. They are going to drag their heels as long as they can on that one. Which But... is really depressing, considering they've. they're almost there. Like, they don't have to make that big a change. They've done so many things that are so accessible for certain groups, they just need to stop and go... These are other groups we should be thinking about with that same lens, I think. Yeah, also Um, they need to stop gating accessibility behind progress. Yes, um, yes. because they seem to do that in so many games. <laughs> like They where they just really go, here's do. here's 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 some accessibility, but you got to get there and get the power. I mean, Mario Wonder was all over that. Yeah, it really, really was. Um... Yeah, I think this is a good place for us to uh, wrap this up. Uh, if anyone has watched this and wants to find you on the internet and places and see other stuff that you do, where can people find you? Uh, people can go to jeffreybunting.co.uk and everything's there. Um, I think I think everything's there. everything worth seeing is there. Lovely. Uh, thank you so much for, jo for joining me today, and thank you everyone for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>